Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia here on the Cat Scrappiness channel to show you how to make a quick and easy typographic card and today I'll be using some of the newest Easter release goodies to create that with. I hope you'll stick around, see what I'm going to create and get a couple tips along the way. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to the channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. We're so glad that you're here again. A couple days ago, Cat Scrappiness celebrated their newest release, which is all about Easter. Now, if you want to get in on a fun hop and a chance to win some goodies, make sure to check out the Instagram post that I have linked in the description box below. I know that you'll love hopping along and seeing what everyone created with the new release. For my card today, I'm going to be using the Hop Into Easter paper pad, the Hippity Hoppity Bunnies stamp set, and the Hippity Hoppity Sentiment stamp set. To add a little bling to my card, I'm going to be using the brand new Aqua AB Jewels. And let me tell you, these are so gorgeous on a card. And then for the typographic part, I pulled out an oldie but goodie set, the condensed lowercase alphabet set. Now all of these products will be listed in that description box below if you want to go check them out when you're done here. As I start the process, I will tell you about any other products or tools I bring in, but as always, if I ever leave you with any questions, leave those in that comment section below, and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! Here is a look at the pattern papers I chose from the paper pack. I got out the gingham colors for my letters, and then I got out a couple scraps for the background. I wasn't sure right now which I would be using. Next, I grabbed the letters for the word Hoppy. Now, I did only have one P, but luckily the D also works for that letter. And because I will not need the O, I will be replacing it with the rabbit, I just put that back on the card. Then I matched up each letter to a piece of the gingham paper, and I took those off screen to do some die cutting. Also off screen, I cut each of the letters from a light gray cardstock as well. I die cut the light gray set so I would have a little bit of a shadow behind each of the gingham letters. To get these adhered together, I put some glue on the front of each of the gray pieces and then I take the gingham counterpart and adhere it so it's a little bit to the upper left of the gray shadow. Once I have the two pieces together, I bring in a clear stamp block and just try to flatten these just so they'll lay nicely and I know that everything's pressed into that glue. I continue to do the same thing for the rest of the letters, trying to keep the gingham copy shifted the same amount as on that first letter. Now once all of these are together, I did set them under the stamp block and let them dry for about five minutes. While the letters were off to the side drying, I went ahead and stamped my image. The bunny that I'm going to be using is the one with the carrot, and I purposefully chose that because the color in the rainbow of letters that I skipped for the bunny could be an orange one. And since the carrot is orange, I thought this was perfect. I wanted to make sure my image was a nice solid black, so I did ink it up and stamp it twice. Because I'll be coloring with some alcohol markers, you'll see that I use Memento Tuxedo Black ink. I did fussy cut this image off camera. I will be using some tri-blend alcohol markers to color in my image. I got an orange for the carrot, a light pink for the bunny cheeks, and the green for the leaves on the carrot. My coloring technique is pretty basic, so I will let you watch it, but I have sped this part up. So you can either enjoy the next minute or so of coloring in music, or skip a little bit ahead if you just want to see the finished image.
Off camera, I ended up choosing this floral paper for my card front, and to help the bunny stand out a little bit from that background, I also got out a scrap of vellum. Now before I adhere the vellum and the pattern paper together, I do want to go ahead and get my hoppy and my bunny in place. To do this, I brought in a couple pieces of painter's tape and I taped the piece of vellum to a piece of grid paper. This way I can see through that and use the lines from the grid paper to evenly space my letters centered across the front of that card. Once I did find good placement for all the letters, I added them to the vellum with some liquid adhesive. You'll notice that I'm not yet adhering the bunny down because I do want to pop that up off the card. So once I have all of the letters in place, I let this dry for about 5 minutes. While that was drying, I went ahead and put my piece of pattern paper onto the front of a top fold card base. And then when all those letters were dry, I could just take off that painter's tape and lift up the vellum. That worked like a charm. I wanted a little bit more of the pattern paper to show through, but I still wanted my word to stand out. So I ended up tearing a strip off the top and bottom of the piece of vellum, and then you'll see when I lay it back down onto the card front, you have those flowers peeking out from the edges. To get this onto the card front, I'm going to use that liquid glue again, and I try to keep it behind where the letters are so you can't see the adhesive from the front. I centered this top to bottom, and then once again I sat it aside to dry. While that was drying, I worked on the rest of my sentiment. I wanted this card to say Hoppy Easter, so I brought in the Hippity Hoppity stamp set, and I decided that I would use the Happy Easter stamp, but you'll notice here in a second I am not going to ink up the word Happy. Instead, I'm going to put this scrap of white cardstock into my Misty, get my sentiment set up on that, and then before I ink it up, I brought in just a post-it note I had sitting around here on my desk, and I covered up the word happy before I inked it up. You also might notice that I have put this word to the right of my piece of cardstock, and that's because I want that word Easter to land below where my bunny is, so I need a little extra white space on the left side. After the word was stamped, I brought in one of the dies from the boxed sentiment strips die set, and I cut that out so Easter was off to the right side. After that was die cut, I added some foam adhesive to the back of the bunny and the sentiment, and I got those two pieces placed onto the card front. Now you will notice here that the left part of that sentiment strip die does end up hanging off the card, but all I did was brought in my pair of nonstick scissors and snipped off the extra. Before this card is complete, I did need to add a little bling. To do this, I added three sets of two dots of glue to the front of my card. I let that get tacky for about 10 seconds, and then I put a little jewel on top of each one. I gave that some time to dry, and here is a look at the finished card. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I put together today's card. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Until the next video, we hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above, and if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.